Welcome to our intra-hospital ICU transfer training video. So it's four o'clock in the morning and you've just finished a stab abdomen for a hemodynamically unstable patient. He's finally stable, but he's on an adrenaline infusion. He has a metabolic acidosis. He has a pneumothorax. He's not ready for extubation and he still needs his anotropic infusion. You've just contacted ICU and they have a bed for you. But that means that you have to move this patient from theatre to ICU when you are tired and you've just worked for hours. But any transfer of an unstable patient is a dangerous, difficult endeavour and you have to really be sure that you do it the right way so that you do not cause any further harm to the patient. We have created a protocol explaining exactly how one should transfer a patient from anywhere else in the hospital into ICU. Today we will be transferring a patient from theatre into ICU. It is quite a long protocol, so to make things easier for you, we have created a checklist that you can use, or that you should use, when you transfer a patient from anywhere else into ICU. So this checklist that you will fill in for every transfer into ICU will become a part of the patient's hospital notes. You start by filling in the first bit of demographic data of the patient. Then we will go through the equipment that we will need for the transfer. Alright, so this is the copy of our inventory list for both our transport box or in this case a transport backpack as well as the list of drugs that we are going to use for our transfer that will be in our drug box. This is our transport backpack on your back so you don't have to carry it in your hand and everything that's in here is on our inventory list that will be available within the transport box as well and it will be checked every day by the ICU staff to make sure. So let's go through the contents of our backpack. It's our drug box. So the drug box you will be receiving from the sister in ICU when you come to collect all of the equipment. It will have a seal on it that you only break if you need to use any of the drugs that will be kept inside the fridge. An ampule of Atomidate, an ampule of saxomethonium. If sax is contraindicated, you will have two ampules of rocuronium available, an additional ampule of fentanyl, a neat ampule of adrenaline. You need a bag, valve, mask, resuscitator with oxygen tubing, face masks in three different sizes. And this bag opens up completely, sterile gloves. So these ones come out and they've got Velcro on the back. So you can stick it in and take them out. Jalcos, alcohol swabs, a short line and some strapping. I have some syringes, some saline flush and needles if you need to give any drugs. Then with regards to rescue airways, there's two options. The one option is if it's, a, it's not a difficult airway. Then we are going to have things like laryngeal mast airways or LMAs in three different sizes. The Vidal or oropharyngeal airway in three different sizes again. If you are expecting a difficult airway, then we're not going to try and intubate the patient en route. We have equipment for a surgical cricothyroidotomy, size 11 surgical blade, a scalpel handle or a disposable handle. Or disposable blade, a puffer syringe, and a size 6 cuffed endotracheal tube. Additionally, we have adhesive tape and tracky tape. Then in the side pockets, we have some extra bits. We've got hibitane alcohol solution, we have an extra giving set, 20 dropper, an additional 200 ml saline, and some extra three way taps. So the first thing now to do is to go to ICU to collect all the equipment that we need and essentially activate the intra-hospital ICU transfer protocol. The protocol is a guideline to be followed, but it can be overridden 
by any ICU or anesthetic consultant. So now we've brought our ICU bed with all of the equipment that we've gone through into theatre. And now we have to make sure that the patient is ready for being transferred. I'll transport monitor on the patient, let's get our ventilator set up and then we'll make sure that the patient is stable for our transfer. So at this stage it's now very important to follow your checklist to make sure that you don't miss anything out. And you have to put a tick next to each thing that you have done. So we have our transport monitor, we have a SATS probe, an ECG, our NIBP and we have our A-line. It's on battery power and it's 100% full. Now we want to make sure that our patient is stable and ready to be transferred to ICU by following our checklist. We can confirm the depth of the ET tube and the So the reason why we're putting an oropharyngeal airway in is so that the patient, when the, if the patient wakes up or becomes restless, they don't bite and block their ET tube. Now we have to just make sure that we have a urinary catheter in and a nasogastric tube. Next we want to check that all of our IV lines are functional. Because this patient is unstable and on an inotropic infusion, he has both an arterial line and a central venous line in place as well. We now want to document all of our vital signs on our checklist to confirm that our patient was stable prior to transfer. This includes the heart rate, the saturation, the blood pressure, the blood glucose, the temperature of the patient, what rate of adrenaline the patient is on, so the mics per kg per minute. An important point to note here is that if the patient was ever on an infusion of more than 0.2 mics per kg per minute, or you've only weaned your inotropes in the last 30 minutes prior to transfer, you have to transfer your patient with an adrenaline infusion running, even if it is running at a very low rate. The next step is to go through all of the drugs that we need to give the patient to be ready for the transfer. Firstly is our drugs for sedation. An important point to note is that you can only say that your patient is adequately sedated with IV drugs once your ET anesthetic agent MAC multiple is less than 0.3. Firstly we're going to give fentanyl, secondly we will give ketamine and then thirdly, we'll give a little bit of midazolam. You can give more, up until 5 milligrams. Midazolam might make the blood pressure drop further. The only emer emergency drug that you have to take with you is adrenaline. The last drug to look at is your muscle relaxant. There are two options. You either have to fully reverse your patient with new stigmine and glycopyrrolate, or you have to re-paralyze the patient. Please can you now go ahead of us and just make sure that there's no obstructions in the way and just open the door for us to our ICU and also tell them that we are that we are on our way. And tell them just confirm the rate of the adrenaline infusion and that the patient is still intubated and that we will need sedation. Like our blood pressure has dropped so let's just go up with our adrenaline infusion here. Patients often become unstable on transfer due to the movement, the inertia of the organs etc. So you always have to be prepared to go up with your inotropic infusion. This is the patient that I told you about earlier. Stab abdomen that's hemodynamically unstable. Here are all of our um, there's our checklist, so you can see here, here's all of the vital signs that we had. We have sedated him with ketamine, midazolam and fentanyl. So the final steps now are just to double check that the oxygen cylinder is still full enough for the next transfer and that it is closed. And then you're on the ventilator, so I can switch off here. Yes. The last thing is guys, we just put that oropharyngeal airway in for the transfer, so we just need to take that out.